Okay, so uh, I'm gonna record this one already. So look at this one. So for this chapter, we're going to cover maybe today we can at least cover one, two, three, maybe yeah, uh, a bit of one, two, three there. Properties of spherical triangle and define what is operate spherical triangle and can use an APS rule to solve the oblique spherical triangle. Hopefully we can reach there, but if not, then we continue tomorrow. Sorry, yeah. So let's uh, try to recap first what is the spherical triangle, right? We all along, we have a triangle in a plane triangle. Okay, so the plane triangle is very uh, special because the three angle, internal angle add together is always 180 degree. But a spherical triangle is the triangle draw on a sphere. Okay, you have actually saw a triangle at three sides, right? So in, it, in this case, we have three points on the surface of a triangle. You have a center, you also have a sphere. For this center, a sphere can draw to the point on the surface. And then you can see how the speaker triangle look like over here. So this is how it look like here. So your center O, and then before we talk about triangle, let's look at what is a great circle first. Okay, when a plane cut a sphere, the figure you form is actually a circle. You can see the a circle, a few circle there. Now, if the circle you draw pass through the center of the sphere, we call it a great circle. So all the great circle have same center as the sphere. If the plane does not pass through the center, center there then the circle is called a small circle. So you can see that there are a few small circles there, the one on the top, a small circle, and the great circle is the one passed through the center of the earth, or center of the sphere. So for example, there's the equator there, right? So these are example a picture of a great circle and a small circle. Of, and for us, we are concentrated only on great circle because it's easier to do calculation, all right? Okay, easier to do calculation. A small circle is, is much more harder to do calculation. Okay, now let's try to figure out spherical triangles here. A spherical triangle. You can see that you draw a triangle on the surface of a sphere. It's a function for a triangle formed by three great circles. So each of them is a great circle here. You can see three color coded. Okay? Three color coded, uh, one blue, one green, one red, uh, one, okay? So you find that, uh, three side of great circle, right? Then you join the three point, the three circle intersect, right? each circle to intersect, two circle will intersect at one point. So there are three circle there. So they are intersect at three point now, then you join these three point of great circle together, you get a spherical triangle. So, how many type of spherical triangle there? A special case is a right angle spherical triangle, which has one of the angle equal to 90 degree. Okay, so I'll show you a picture of right angle triangle. Okay, the, the other triangle which uh, called quadrangle, tri spherical triangle, 
is one that one in each side is 90 degree. Okay, one in each, but that means on one side is 90 degree, right? So, and it's not just angle, so one side, right? It's 90 degree. And oblique spatial triangle is one which does not contain 90 degree at all. Okay, in, in, in any side, any angle. So you see that this is, but for today, we only look at right angle, spatial triangle. So let's look at some properties of a uh, spherical triangle. One of the property of spherical triangle is very different from the plane triangle. Is the sum of the three angle is always greater than one eight zero and less than five four zero. So if you, if you draw a spherical triangle. So on the left side is the plane triangle. Add up the angle A, B, C. Okay, add up angle A, B, C. You find that the angle always 180 degree. But for a spherical triangle, okay, for a spherical triangle, you add up the angle. This angle is always greater than 180. Okay, and it's less than 540. So this is the first point of the spherical triangle. Then the second point. When you measure the length of a spherical triangle now, so in plane triangle we have length three nautical mile, five nautical mile, three seven nautical miles for example. So you can find the length measured in nautical miles. But for spherical triangle, the side are measured in terms of Angle using degree, minutes, and second. Okay. Why is it using degree, minutes, and second? Let me illustrate this a, a little bit here. So, okay, so this is a page here to illustrate to you why, I, why is it like that. So, for example, I have a spear here. And your center O, then the uh, square circle, so square circle here, okay, let's say I want to find out the length of uh, this P and Q here. Okay, what's the length PQ here? So instead of measuring my kilometer, nautical miles, so use degree. As I mean, use degree, you find out this angle here. Okay, so use theta. As the distance. So that means that if you draw it, this length here, PQ here, PQ is theta now. Okay, PQ is theta now. So what is the length of PQ here? You can find that, okay, this PQ because of angle here, you can go from this, uh, usually your PQ will be somewhere between, the theta will be somewhere now. So this distance is called theta now. So this distance is called theta now. Okay. Theta is always between uh, zero degree. Okay. Up to how much is that? Depend on how far I can go. Okay. You go one round, you get uh, three six zero, right? Zero, you go one round circle, three six zero. Okay, so this is how do you measure the length of, of a great circle? Okay, so that's why you use degree here to measure the angle here, to measure the length of the distance. 
Okay. Okay, so uh, what else I can say? The sum of any two sides is greater than the third side. So this normally happen in triangle. Okay, here. Because triangle has three sides there. If you have two sides, that together must be greater than the third side. The length of the side here. So this is better for a triangle. This is also true for any triangle, not just vertical triangle. Okay, then just for the side, huh, the sum of three sides is always less than 360. Okay, the most is 360. Right? So the sum add up is always less than 360. The sum, the, the side or angle, angle add up is less than 540. But the side add up is less than 360. So then how about equal side have equal opposite angle? So if your two sides are the same length, then the, the angle will be the same also. Okay, last point is more than then you, then you know the triangle look like. The greater the side, the greater the angle opposite to the side. Okay, you have two sides compare, one side is longer, then the angle opposite the, the side will be larger. So, for example, I draw a picture here. So, I have this picture of distance between the equator to the North Pole. Okay, is how much? Equator to the North Pole distance is actually 90 degrees. Okay, the equation, the distance between the North Pole and South Pole is how much? It's 180 degrees measured by the length, length of the angle from the center. Okay, so this is usually the North Pole there, the pole on top there, South Pole below here. So if you measure the distance from the North Pole to the South Pole, measure along the great circle, the angle is 180 degrees. Okay. Okay, so this one I uh, show you what is the picture here. You have three circles there. So one side, uh, three circles here. One side is colored by yellow. One side is colored by green. One side is colored by blue. So there are three angles there. A, B, C, right? So let me copy this thing. I mean, B here. See, this is A, B, C. Here, so uh, A, this is uh, angle A because, because so this A here, angle A, and then this uh, angle B, this angle C. So add together, these three angles must be greater than 180 now and less than 540. All right, so this is a uh, spherical triangle. So, so how do you, so if we are point, just say the uh, point, uh, one point is, uh, let me draw a picture again, so, so you can understand how to, how to you get a picture uh, measuring this. So let me insert this, draw a triangle, spear again. So you have a spear, Okay, equator. So center of here. Yeah. So let's play this point is in the 30 P here. Let's say it's actually 30 degree north and 15 west. This is easier to measure one. Okay. So let's say this is the P here. So you have a point P, okay, and then they have point Q here. So P is 30 degree north, 15 degree west, and then Q is also an R point. Let's say Q is same thing you, uh, for, let's say 45 degree, South, 15 degree, 
west. So actually the line on the same big circle here. Okay, you can big circle here. So what is the distance between P and Q now? The distance of P and Q now. So you measure the distance by degree. So you can find that uh, that, that means that this distance from here to the equator, this equate this is 30 degree. Okay, this is distance 30 degree. And then this distance is 45 degree south. Right? So this is 45 degree here. Yeah? Moving south, right? So this term of PQ is to add up these two angles, 130 degree, 145 degree. So you find that this distance is 75 degree. Okay, so just illustration how the distance are travel. The distance uh, traveling to two point. Okay, so this is just uh, introduction of spherical triangle. So let me WhatsApp this page to you, then we pause for a while first. So let me uh, first have answer a question from another lecturer. I'm requesting something. So let me what's up to you how to find the distance between two points, right? Using grid circle. Okay, so uh, this is this COC, right? This is the slide I show to you. Okay, I'm going to find the tutorial question five. Right? Okay, so let's continue first. Okay, so uh, this one will take some time to explain what is the Napier's rule. So let me copy this thing uh, on the other slide here because there's a bit too many information inside here already. So, okay, let me copy this thing. Okay, we are going to look at Napier's rule now. Okay, Napier's rule, uh, right anchor. The Napier's rule is actually for right anchor speaker triangle. Okay, right anchor means one of anchor is 90 degree. So I have a right anchor triangle ABC show you there. So how do you label a triangle? So triangle at three sides, right? So you see this is angle A first. So angle A, angle B, angle C. Let's say C is a right angle. Okay, C is right angle here. So there is a right angle here. So this one only for right angle. If there is no right angle, you have to create right angle to do calculation. And sometimes you have to use other rules also, but this is specifically for right angle. So I have three angle there, A, B, C. Then the side opposite the angle, you use small letter A, right? So 
this is small letter A, this is small letter B, this is small letter C. So this is how you label the side here, right? So from here, let me erase all the color now, so you know how the triangle are labeled. This is for right angle triangle, right? Okay, so then I must tell you how do you uh, draw something called the Nippers view, right? Nippers view is the one on the right hand side. So let me explain to you how to draw Nippers view here. I draw a Nippers view over here. So Nippers view looks like okay. The, the, the best view usually have two part on the top and three part at the bottom. Okay, three part on the bottom. And on the top there, you always look at right angle, C. Right? So right angle 90 degree, C. It's an angle here, 90 degree. Okay, then how do you fill in the Napier's view, right? This is called Napier's view here. So what you're going to do is starting from C, okay? You traverse this triangle on the left clockwise. Okay, you go clockwise also. Huh? Clockwise, so try from C first, clockwise. So C first. Now, first thing you encounter is the site B. So you find that, oh, I have a site B now. First thing is B. So what you do, you write down on the right B, site B. Okay, after side B everly, you encounter the anchor A. Okay, so side B finish everly. This is side B here. Right, side B here. Now encounter the anchor A. So you feel the anchor next to it now. Then continue to travel clockwise. Okay, now this time you'll find that you are with the side C now. Okay, side C now. So let me use a blue color now. Side C here. Yeah. Side C now. So this is next to it is side C here. Yeah. Okay, side C. So I use a blue color for side C here. Then afterward, you encounter the angle B. So B, let me see the orange color here. B here, orange color B. Okay, so this is actually B here. Okay, then finally the last side you go to get is I mean you use, use another color. Normally color level. Let's try this one. Okay, this one. Okay, two it's angle A now, right? No, no, angle A, side A. All these anchor side are measured in degree. Huh? All anchor side, all anchor side are measured in degree. A minute and second, all right? 
and the uh, center we have something called a com. We are explaining the com here. Okay, so this is how you draw the spherical triangle together with the Napier's field. Okay, you have triangle A, B, C, three angle there, yeah, then three side. Then you label the side. Obviously, the angle you get small letter. Then traverse the tri the triangle starting from C. Angle C where the right angle is. Okay, so start where travel from C and right angle is. Okay, this is where this is where you start. Then C, I think degree, huh? Right? So clockwise. So you look at the first side, then next angle A, second side C, next angle B, then and third side A. Uh, this is called a Napier's view. Okay. So this Napier's view will help us do some calculation. Okay. So I'm going to explain here the part on top here how to do the calculation. Okay, so the first rule I am going to talk about is sine of meter part, support out cosine. All right, so let me copy this again. So the Napier's rule we have two formula only. Okay. All of them are very sim similar. We are. Okay, so let me go to this one. Okay, insert new slide. So let me explain what is the first formula about. The first formula about, right? So I have a Napier's view draw on the side there. So what this first formula is, Sine of middle part is product of cosine of opposite. Okay, so if you write down sine of middle part, okay, sine of middle part. This is a okay, sine of middle part here is equal to cosine product of opposite, opposite now. Product of cosine. Opposite. So what does it mean? Okay, let's say I want to find the side C. How big is the side C here? So side C is the middle part now. So side C the middle part here. C is the one in the middle called middle part here. Now opposite, what I mean by opposite here, yeah, opposite are the opposite of side C, where are they now? Opposite of side C is actually uh, this one, A and B. Okay, so now I'll just explain to you again. Okay, C is the center, middle part, A and B are opposite. Okay, this is called opposite of a site or whatever it is okay so in this case you can write sine of middle part here sine of middle part middle part is c right purposely because uh, this com there okay the com i just purposely put a com there first because if any sign of angle is below the view we have to put a com there okay put a com there for any things Angle or side below the view. You have to put a comb there. So comb of side C. So make sure that you use a small letter here because this small letter here, side C, is equal to cosine, product of cosine. So that means cosine of A, side A, cosine of side B. A and B are opposite there. So I use a purposely, use a, a, a uh, this one. So this one is actually use a color. All right. 
and then this is actually I use blue here A and B. So sign of COM C. COM C is going to call product of cosine of A and B, opposite of A and B here. So you always put a COM for anything below the wheel. Okay? So for example, this is for the first case, all right? Then I'm going to explain COM later on. Let me look as an example for you. So this is the case. What happened if I change the direction situation? I'll say, uh, if I, let me clear this one now. Now, let's say I want the middle part. Let's say I want the middle part is anchor A now. Okay, anchor A now. So what is the things opposite anchor A? I think opposite anchor A is blue part now. It's actually this and this. Okay, so if you want to write them, how do you write them now? So remember the calm thing. Huh? So I can write first sign of middle part. Middle part is yellow part here. So the sign of middle part here. Sign of calm. Now the anchor A now. Okay, calm A. A is the middle part. Anchor A now. So I use yellow for. Okay. Now it's equal to product of cosine. Product of cosine of opposite. So I can write now. Equal to cosine. Okay, what? A is on top, so you can use a still use the A here. Okay, you can, you can still use the A here. A on top there. But anchor B, uh, because anchor B is below now. Anchor B below the is lower half of you here. So you use cosine of com anchor B. So B is this one now. Okay, because B is in the lower half of you, you have to use a com before. Okay, so I have illustrated this uh, special case. I can try to use another center, middle part. Let's say the middle part, I want to use a uh, Side B now, right? So you want to use the middle part here, yeah? side B here. Yeah? So I erase the color. So the middle part, let's say the middle part is here, yeah? side B. Opposite side B, yeah, anchor B and anchor side C. So you can use side sign of uh, B now because B is uh, on, on the top half of the view here. Yeah? So you can use the color B yellow one. Now product of cosine. So you must cosine now. Cosine. Anchor B now because B is Anchor B is on the lower half, so you can put com here. Com B, then cosine also com C. So these are the things you need to wash out. How to use a com here. Okay, com C, and this is how you use a sine of middle part, product of opposite. Now, and what is the actually the mid, the comms here, right? Okay? So I use a com here. When the meaning of com here, so when we say com of A, com A, what does it mean? It means 90 degree minus A. Com of B, is 90 degree minus B. Com of side C, for example, com of side C here, 
is actually 90 degree minus C. Remember all the side and angle are measured in degree. Okay, so this is how to explain what this Napier's rule is all about. So I can WhatsApp this to you. Okay, so this is a before. All right, so I can watch the earlier page to you as well. The earlier page is this one. Is how to use a color link here. Coming at Naples view. So I have explained the first formula. Okay. Next, I want to explain this. So first formula, I have something called the opposite, all right? I have something explain to you what to even the opposite. I use the blue color to explain the opposite here. Now the second formula, I want to talk sine of middle part is equal to product. Our tangent now, right? Just now, just now, all, all, all about cosine. The second one, product of tangent of adjacent. Okay, product of adjacent. Now. So this one, the second formula is product of, of tangent. Instead of opposite now, opposite. Instead of product of tangent, now tangent now. Of adjacent. Okay, adjacent. So sine of middle part is the product of tangent of adjacent. What is adjacent now? Adjacent are usually use the green color one. Green color for adjacent, right? So uh, these two are adjacent of a yellow part. Okay. The two yellow, the two blue one is for the opposite. The green color is for adjacent. So for example, I can change the color now. So I let's say let me Look at the formula. So sine of B is equal to two green one adjacent of B, right? So this is tangent now. Tangent of A is on top of you. Then tangent of calm angle A. So these are the green color one. Use tangent now. Okay, so two green color and uh, yellow color. So I can do also change the view now. Let's say the center instead of B now. Let's say the center I want to do uh, the center I want to do this one. Angle A. Okay, angle A here. So angle A is inside the view, lower half of view. So I use COM A. And then it is now. I use tangent now, right? So tangent, I think this is slightly different now. I use the green color one. So there are two adjacent side. One is side B, one is side C. So I use tangent of B first. Tangent of B. Okay. Then tangent of side C. The side C is below the view, so it's a calm. Small C. So this is how you using the green color one. It's just right. Com A is below the view, so you have A is below the view, so Com A. And tangent B, you don't need to change, just tangent B only. But C, you have to put a Com C. Com A is basically the same meaning, 90 degree minus whatever you have. 
So let's see if I change the color now. Okay, I want to change it to uh, C now, side C now. So I'll change the color now. So say this is C now. Okay, so C is below the lower wheel, so this is com C there. Now I want to use adjacent now, so I can use adjacent. So adjacent, I use a green color. So this is anchor B, anchor A. So this one, oh, a lot of com there, because both, all the information are below the wheel here. So you must write, okay, so you must write here. Take a long one. Eh? This one is actually tangent now. Tangent of com anchor B times tangent of com anchor A. So anchor A and B are need to take com. Okay, so this is how I explain the third. The second formula, right? So I can pass this to you. Explanation of how these things are done. This all appears view. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, yeah, any, anybody got any question? Okay. All right. So let's continue. The example now, right? So the, the one I explained about how to use uh, travels, the wheels, right? How to get in, how to get out. Okay. So let me go to example, right? Before I go to example. So usually, yeah, right angle, spiegel, triangle for this, only work for right angle, spiegel, triangle. Right? So you don't have right angles, then you cannot use this, right? You still can use this, but you have to create a right angle here. Okay, so you draw a triangle, we want right angle there, then draw the views by traveling the triangle, Clockwise, starting from the right angle. Okay, then how do you apply do a calculation? So you must do the middle part. Okay, middle part is usually the unknown part. You don't know why is that, so this is called a middle part. So I use an orange color here to say that this is the unknown part. Then the two degree, then you use a known part called a given side, and then you can do the remaining calculation. So this is, you just put an unknown part as a middle part. You can easier do calculation here. So because not all the part you know, <coughs> sorry. So let's start with first example. So I'm going to use over here. First example here. Okay, start from here. So you right angle spiegel triangle. Remember, this is always right angle triangle. 90 degree, right? PQR. So your PQR where is 90 degree? 90 degree at PQR. So you can draw a triangle now. So let's say this is triangle. You try to draw a curved triangle, huh? so no more, no more straight line really. They are great circle. So, I mean, circle here. So Q is here. So let's say P here is R. P Q R. The angle P is 45 degree. So this is 45 degree here. And side R, side R, what does it mean? All the side opposite R here, this R here, 60 degree. 
So find side P. Side P, yeah, small letter P, yeah, so otherwise you get confused. The side P, yeah, so the capital P. And angle R, so by this angle here. Yeah? Okay, so I draw a triangle really. Now I'm going to draw the view, right? Draw the view. The view always like that. On top, there are two parts. Below, there are three parts. Okay, center, there's a cone. After I draw a view, a few times you know it's, it's always like that, okay? The top are two parts. The bottom of three part have center that's called all right so you put 90 degree which is q now q here 90 degree right okay you start from 90 degree so you go in a clockwise direction so you can move in so clockwise direction now so this one clockwise okay the side the first thing you notice is side P. So this is the right side P here. Side P. Afterward, you encounter the angle R. Right? So side P. So I use uh, this one first. So okay, side P here. Then you encounter the Angle R. So this R here. Then continue to transverse clockwise. So So, so accidentally and change the color. So this time, clockwise. Right after R already, you you get the side, which is opposite Q now. So we call it Q small Q here. Small Q now, right? This. They bought it, small Q. So this Q here. So let me use a green color here. Okay, so then afterwards, you encounter the angle P now, okay? So angle P, let me use a orange color here. Angle P here, angle P. Then the last side encounter is the side R here. So I use this color here, 60 degree. Okay, so this 60 degree here. So R is 60 degree. What else? Angle P is 45 degree. Okay, so you have completed the view first, all right? So you can compare the picture RP here. I think the, the picture I have this one, RP here. Okay, R60 degree. Okay, so the same picture, right? They all have the same picture here. 
So this is completing the view first. So I can well set this to you. Then let's do the calculation, right? Okay, so calculation, unfortunately, you have to do calculator, right? Get calculator out, maybe and do a calculation. So let's clear all the color first and then do calculation, right? So I clear all the color now. Okay, all about color now. So this P here, yeah, small uh, angle, small side P here. Yeah. Okay, so. Now let's start to do calculation. Huh? So the first thing is which one is unknown? Site P is unknown. Okay. Site P is unknown. What else is unknown? R is unknown. So which one do you choose first? You find that R is a, the one you choose first because R is the one of unknown. I use yellow for unknown. So I know why is always the middle part. The white uh, part that is opposite there, just nice. Because you find the opposite this, I used the blue color one just now. So these are the blue color one. So I use a formula now. The formula say that sine of middle part here. So you can write down sine of middle part. Middle part is uh, R here. Okay. But because R is below the view, so you have to make sure that com R. Okay, com R is product of a cosine of the opposite. So cosine of side R, cosine of angle P. So I will erase, move this a little bit here. Sine of middle part sine of com r is equal to cosine of r cosine of com p okay for that of cosine here so so cosine com p angle p right so so i have two blue one blue one and yellow narrow one okay so this is a formula let me copy this again in case you you wondering the formula is this one okay just copy this again so that you can see that this is the formula I use Okay, sine of middle part is equal to product of cosine of opposite. Okay, so com R, uh, uh, yellow part is a uh, com R now, okay, R. So what is this now? Okay, I know this is equal to Cosine of small angle 60 degree now. Then cosine of comp P, right? Cosine of comp P. Comp P is what? Comp P is 99 minus, minus P. 45. Because P is 45 now. Huh? When you remember, comp of angle A, whatever it is, means 90 degree minus A. So this is cosine 60, 
cosine 45. Okay, cosine 60 times cosine 45. Let's see why this thing now. So, cosine 60 here times cosine 45. So, this is equal to square of 2 of 4, and this is equal to square 2 of 4, yeah? Okay, fine. So, what does it mean? Okay, where is R now? Remember, this is 90 minus R. Okay, so com R is 90 minus so that means that from here, you know, sine of com R means 90 minus R here is equal to square root of minus over 4. So that means that 90 minus R equal to sine inverse square root 2 over 4. Okay, so let's try to figure out. Okay, square two over four sine inverse is what now? So sine inverse shift, sine inverse answer. This is twenty point seven. Okay, this is twenty degree forty two minutes. Twenty degree. 42 minutes here. It's 90 minus R. That means that R is equal to 90 minus 24. Right? So you can just uh, uh, this one minus 90 degree. You get Sixty nine degree seventy minutes or oh, eighty minutes here. Clear this eighty minutes, right? So get okay, R in this case, you find out why it's R now. The side, the anchor R here. So you find out sixty nine degree eighty minutes as given by the answer. Okay, example one. So we know that how I do this, I always use the middle part, which is the one I know. Okay, middle part use use middle part here usually is unknown. In this way, I choose R because I have information. So the middle part usually is unknown part. So you know this is unknown middle part. So I use the happen to be R uh, because this part unknown the the red the rest uh, the blue part is uh, known. So this unknown part is actually the middle part here. And then this one is unknown part. This is a no part here. Some come down across some opposite, right? Cos opposite here. So I use this to find answer. Okay, I can pass this to you. So I have find out the side R already, sorry, the angle R already. So let's do the next part. The next part. So this R I know is 69 degree 18 minutes here. So 69 
degree, 18 minutes, huh? so this R here. So the uh, next thing I want to find that is a side P now. Huh? Okay, side P now, so this side P is the one, which is here now. So I'm going to use the unknown part here, this is side P here. So unknown part is here now. Uh, what else you know? Ah, okay. So I'm going to unknown the side P now. So I'm going to use a green color one. So I know the side P. So now two side I know already. So I use a green color one. So green color one only. So green color adjacent. So I'm going to use a different formula now. So I copy the formula on the earlier page. This is a formula here. I use second formula, tangent now. Sine of middle part equal product of tangent of adjacent. So this is the part I use here. Yeah, huh? this here. Okay, sign of middle part is the product of tangent of the adjacent here. So I use middle part, always use yellow. Tangent of adjacent, adjacent, I will use green. So let's change the formula now. I know R already. So let's find out what's now, right? So this time I don't need to come here P, the, the side P, okay, is on the upper half of you's view. So you just side P here will do. So side P here. You go to tangent, a product of tangent here. So I learn tangent R, and that one is tangent com R. Okay, you see, you see that one of them you need the yellow here. Yeah? Side P is the side. P is the small letter P, la. so I'm not very confused. So, yellow part, and then the green part. Huh? So, I use this second Napier rule. So this will give me tangent 60 degree, tangent com R. Okay, so let's see, com 90 degree now, minus R. R is 69 degree, 80 minutes. So the tangent 60 degree. Uh, 90 degree minus 69 minute. Tell me also the last calculation here. So this is a 90 degree first, 90 degree first, minus 69 degree, 
18 minutes. So 20 degree, 40 minutes. Just now we calculated early, so actually don't need calculation like this. So this one is, let's find a tangent first. So tangent of this thing. Times tangent of 60. Okay, to log my six five four four eight. Okay, so what is P now? So P is equal to sine inverse now zero point six five four four eight here. So if you got where is this angle? Side P now. So shift sign inverse now. Forty point eight, which is equal to forty degree fifty three minutes nearest. Okay, I take fifty three minutes now. Huh? So the answer is fifty four huh? but I think we close enough. So this is how you get the side P is over here. So, so I can WhatsApp this to you. Example one, how to apply an APS rule. Okay, so I managed to work out example one, right? Then you'll do example two tomorrow. Lah, huh? So I think it's about time to stop early. So anything, anyone got any question? Tomorrow we can meet each other again. Uh, sir, I got a question. Yeah. yeah. During exam, the formula we have to come up ourselves, right? Not in formula. No, 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 no. You don't need to come up with any formula for this one. Okay. All the Napier's rule formula will be given to you. The product of sine, uh, product of cosine, and product of tangent, all this are given to you. Yeah, you just have to bear in mind when when to use use it. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So I think that will be all. So we can stop the follow me again. Okay. So I have stopped recording.